I'm Marnie Nasher, publisher of the Central New York Business Journal, and would like to welcome everyone again to our latest CNY Business Journal interview series. Please stay up to date by viewing our website daily at cnybj.com regarding the news and impact that the coronavirus is having in all businesses in Central New York, especially now with our reopening. Now I'd like to welcome Kathy Theoville, CEO of Meadow Solutions, a family-owned business located in Utica. Kathy, thank you for joining me. Sure, Marnie, glad to be here. So why don't you uh, share with our audience about Metal Solutions? What are you? Uh, so Metal Solutions, we're a sheet metal fabricator. We make component parts for other companies' products. We're located in Utica, and we have about 100,000 square feet of manufacturing space. We fabricate anything from simple parts to complex assemblies, and we specialize in welding small pressure vessels. Uh, we offer prototyping services uh, right through to high volume production, and we serve a wide range of industries, but we specialize in mass transit, heating and air conditioning, and air filtration. And we're also an ISO 9001-2015 certified company. So how long have you been around for? Uh, well, we're a second generation family owned business. Uh, my dad started his career in sheet metal uh, as a sheet metal mechanic in World War II. He had a flying sheet metal shop in the Pacific and he patched the airplanes when they came back from battle. So when he returned from the war, he started the business, which was 1954. Uh, my brother Joe has spent his entire career in metal solutions. I developed some outside experience. Then I joined the business full time in 2003. And so today, my brother Joe and I uh, own and operate the business along with another partner. So you had shared um, that you really had a positive story that you were not impacted as most businesses were during COVID. And if you could share that story with us, I think it's worth noting for our, our readers. Sure. Well, we had, uh, as I'm sure many others did, several customers closed down during the pandemic uh, who were deemed non-essential. Uh, and if that were the case, the only thing for us that would have been a real hardship, but we've been working with a company named Aeromed for the past 20 years. They manufacture HEPA air filtration equipment, and in the past 10 years, they've been manufacturing and selling UV units, mostly in other countries, uh, to fight tuberculosis. So the technology has never really taken off in the U.S. just because of the lack of need, and with the onset of COVID, uh, that's certainly changed. Uh, so their market has exploded and their sales have exploded. They're a small company, so we helped to uh, help them to scale. And we took over the complete manufacturing and assembly of their air filtration and UV units. Uh, it's completely filled the, the gap of sales that we lost from those customers uh, that were closed when they were deemed non essential. It's also been a tremendous boost, uh, boost to our employee morale during this time period. Our employees really felt like they were contributing to fighting the virus. So overall, it's been, it's been great for us and we continue to do that work along with getting the other work back from our customers who are opening back up. So do you feel that this opportunity was a stroke of luck or what did Metal Solutions do right to be in the right place in the right time with this customer? Yeah, you know, I feel like our ability to change gears quickly and adapt to the new business was a driving force behind our success in filling the gap. Um, and even though I don't think anybody could have anticipated a worldwide pandemic, we have had uh, a belief in these products for the years we've been making them. Um, we've been an integral part of the development and we really felt like there was going to be a future market for these at some point in the United States. And with the pandemic, that's come true. Do you have a sense of how many other local manufacturers were able to make a successful pivot like you did to get through this pandemic or probably not? Yeah, you know, I mean, we, I feel like we have a lot of resilient manufacturers in our area and I think we've all had to overcome a lot of things over the years and they seem to be adapting from what I can see. Now, you mentioned that your biggest customer closed. What do you think is the outlook for companies uh, that you're currently keeping in contact with in terms of their recovery? Are they coming back online as this, the economy is reopening right now? 
We've been in close contact with all our customers throughout the COVID crisis, uh, and they're slowly coming back online. I believe they're all going to fully recover, but I think it's going to take a lot longer than everyone would like. Uh, mass transit has been very hard hit um, by this between a decrease in ridership and the fear of using mass transit. So that industry is going to take even longer to recover, I think. So uh, you are a certified New York State WBE, and um, I always like to ask uh, businesses if this is an opportunity that really helps you as a manufacturer. Absolutely. We're a WB and we're also a DBE. And uh, having those certifications have certainly opened the doors faster than it would otherwise. It's given us significant opportunity to grow and better ourselves as a company. And do you feel like, uh, would you recommend a women-owned business, uh, the value of the certification going through the process? Absolutely. It's, it's certainly valuable. It, it, uh, you know, it, it, the value comes in the opportunities for the work. From there, it really takes a high-performing company to be able to take advantage of it. It's quite a bit of work to get through the certification process and maintain it, but it's well worth it. Now, you said you're also a DBE. Is that disability? That is a disadvantaged business enterprise, which is a fe and that's a federal status. Yes. Okay. And what is the process for that? Uh, about the same as the New York State WBE, I would say more intense. Okay. And uh, yep, and, but uh, and more thorough. Um, but about the same in terms of the, the basic process. So coming out of this pandemic with the reopening, both in the Mohawk Valley and the, the central New York region, do you have a vision as to how we're coming out of it and how we're going to get to the other end? Do you feel like things are moving in the right direction or do you have any concerns? Where do you, where do you, what do you see in, in a year to come from now? I think we've got a long road ahead of us. I, and I think we're gonna see setbacks. Um, I think it's going to take several years for us to recover. Um, I, I think we're taking the right steps uh, to get out of it and, and open back up safely, but it's going to be a long road from my estimation. All right. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. And thank you for spending time with us and with me today. Uh, everyone, please continue to stay healthy during this time. Every one of us has been impacted. We will persevere as a community and we certainly are resilient. Thank you very much.